You all know I'm not the biggest fan of cooking, but when I do cook, I use my caraway kitchenware. I can make my favorite food and I know that my food won't be full of toxins and the cleanup will be easy and quick. Caraway cookware is non-toxic and chemical free, so you can fill your summer with your favorite recipes without worry. Visit carawayhome.com slash respectable to get 10% off during their summer refresh event. Certain exclusions apply. That's carawayhome.com slash respectable or use code respectable at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable from Vienna. Last time we spoke, I was in Paris. Today, I'm in Vienna. Tomorrow, I've moved to a new city. I told you I was on a mini odyssey. 11 days, three countries. It was supposed to be 13 days, three countries, four cities, but thanks, British Airways. That didn't quite work out. But Vienna is everything that I'd hoped for and more. It really wasn't that high on my bucket list. I was scrolling on Instagram one day. I follow all these like random travel accounts and someone had gone to Vienna and it was this amazingly beautiful, I thought it was a palace or one of those like house museums from like the 18th century or something. It was a cafe in a museum. And I was like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I want to see that in person someday. So I saved the post and then I started getting all these suggested follows for these accounts about Vienna. And the more and more I saw, I was like, I have to go. And once I started researching it and I was like, oh, this is totally my vibe. You know how I am about my ornate architecture and my history and my palaces and my gardens and all of those things. Vienna has all of that in massive abundance. All I do here is go to palaces and art museums and gardens and eat. That's it. I I walk between 9 and 12 miles every day. Mostly walking around museums and walking around palaces and through gardens and whatnot. It's great. I'd be exhausted at the end of every day. Like my body literally hurts when I get into the bed. But like I love it. I'm in heaven right now. Vienna's a really beautiful city, really clean. It's like lick the spoon clean. It's clean like Abu Dhabi clean. That was the other place I've been that I was like, I've never been someplace that's so clean. Vienna's clean like Abu Dhabi. It's beautiful. I read that, I want to say Condé Nast Traveler recently ranked it, and it's not the first time, as the number one city to live in in the world. I wouldn't want to move here. I wouldn't want to live here, but I totally get like how it could be ranked number one. I know all of that's very subjective. It's convenient. It's reasonably priced. It's gorgeous. It's clean. It's got lots of food options. It's got a good art scene. There's like a lot of diversity in interests, I guess you could say. It's not very diverse in terms of people. It's overwhelmingly white. There's a ton of Americans over here, like a ton. Not a bad thing. It's just like, you know, I crossed the ocean to get away from y'all mofos and you're all here. By y'all, I don't mean like black Americans. I mean the uncolored ones. Who I don't really mind in general. It's just when you bring your obnoxiousness with you. Speaking of obnoxious Americans of color, nonetheless... I don't know if you've been following this story. It's really big on the Ghana blogs right now, but it did make it to, was it on the shade room? Melanin shade room. I also follow them. This group of girls, Americans went over to Ghana and they went to a slave dungeon. They went to Elmina. The two most popular ones are Cape Coast, which is the one like when you do the season world trips with me and Davida. We go to Cape Coast, but I have been to Elmina. There was a Samuel L. Jackson documentary about him going back to Africa and finding his roots. And he went to Elmina. And Elmina is the one, when you go on the tour, they show you the, I can't remember what the official title was. Say like the 
the head white person in charge, a commander, if you will, um, of the dungeon had his had his own quarters in the slave dungeon, obviously not in the dungeons, but like above, you know, in the fancy white people part. He has this trap door in his floor that leads directly down to where the captured and tortured women and girls are kept. He tells whoever which girl or woman that he wants for his entertainment. The quickest point between point A and point B is a straight line. So they would just go up the stairs and through the trap door into his room. Minor detail about Elmina. But these girls, four of them, went to Elmina and decided to twerk at at Elmina's slave dungeon. It's the equivalent of a Jewish person whose ancestors survived a concentration camp going back to Auschwitz and twerking. It's so incredibly disrespectful, not just to do, but to do it and film it. And then your dumb ass uploaded it so everybody else could see you doing that shit. Like you're proud of it. It's, it's, it's completely beyond me. And then what also is completely beyond me is I see the video and people are actually trying to justify it. And they're like, oh, you people in your respectability politics, like y'all get upset at anything. You know, this could be something where they were like, you know, channeling their West African ancestors because this is a dance in Africa. Stop that dumb shit. Stop that dumb shit immediately and right now. People will try to justify the dumbest of shit in the dumbest of ways. This ain't no like ancestral dance or some shit. And if they were to do it, they would do it at a celebration. They wouldn't do it at a slave dungeon. (sighs) There's a time and a place, people, a time and a place. And if that's called respectability politics, then so be it. I'm not saying don't shake your ass. There is a time and a place for twerking. Carry that shit to the club. Carry that shit to the club. I have no issue with you twerking at the club. Twerking at the site where your ancestors were raped, beaten, and otherwise tortured, and then separated from their homeland, changing the course of history, the largest mass migration of people in the history of the world, people stolen from their homeland and forced into slavery for hundreds of years. You think that the actual origin site of all of that is a place to go and be funny is a place to go and bend your ass over and shake it online. Like, really? Really? The Gunyan blogs are so lit up right now, dragging the fuck out of Americans. Between Meek Mill showing up to see the president in a, in a white tee and some basketball shorts and riding his dirt bike all over a crop, and now these chicks over there bent over twerking, Ghana's not America. It's an entirely different culture. It's a very conservative culture, at least during the day. At night, at the parties, it's a whole different story. But there's a there's a decency and an order of the way things operate in Ghana. And I need people to sometimes remember when they go out into the world that you are a guest in somebody else's country. To show up in somebody else's country and go and shake your ass on sacred ground where again, people were tortured, people were stolen, people were murdered. You literally can go into slave dungeons to this day and see the ball and chains on the ground. You can see like the, the, for lack of a better word, like the demarcation line of where like the feces and urine and vomit and sweat and other, other bodily fluids created a The closest way I can think to describe it is when Katrina happened and the water got into the houses and fucked up everything, there was a demarcation line of everything that got wet and everything that stayed dry. There's that same line of demarcation of of where like the, the bodily fluids, all variations, rose on the wall that people were literally standing in. Like you're standing in your own shit. You're standing in your own vomit. That smell is a part of the walls. It's a part of the floors. Like literally, not at Elmina, but at Cape Coast, they went through at one point to find the original floor of 
one of the slave dungeons at Cape Coast. And it was like three or four inches lower than where the floor was. And that extra three to four inches was compacted. This guy said it last time I was on the tour. And that's one of the reasons I said I'll never do this again. It's compacted DNA. It's vomit and spit and sweat and urine and feces. It was so much of it. And then people standing on top of it, standing in it and standing on top of it, that it compacted into extra inches on the floor. That's the site that these these disrespectful women went and shook their ass at. Like it was cute. Show some fucking respect. If not for the country you're visiting, for yourself, perhaps, or perhaps for your ancestors. Because if you're an American and the furthest you can trace back your history is, I don't know, four or five generations tops, your ancestors probably got held in a slave castle on the west coast of Africa. So fucking disrespectful. Call it respectability politics. Call it whatever you want. Shit's not appropriate. I read that Nia Long is coming out with a memoir. The first time I saw it, this person was like, why? Do we care? I care. I care. I came up in the 90s. Nia Long was that girl. I think she's still that girl, to be quite honest with you. But she told Essence that she has a new book coming out. She said, quote, for better or worse, you will find truth and transparency in the storytelling sprinkled with 90s nostalgia. I'm reading this on Yahoo. It says Long's memoir will chronicle her decade spanning career, including romances. Who do we know that Nia Long used to date? I know she tried to date Chris Rock and that didn't go so well. I think they literally went on a date. I don't know anybody else that Nia Long used to date. I mean, other than like the fiance where, you know, he cheated and that whole thing, the the whole Celtic situation. But that's the only person that I've known Nia Long to date. Well, that's one thing she's going to talk about. Motherhood, iconic roles, and then very vaguely, she says, untold stories. And Yahoo points out the memoir comes at a time When Nia Long is having, quote, a resurgence in attention and popularity. They note that she was recently featured on Janelle Monae's Age of Pleasure album, which I have not listened to. My bad. I just, I haven't gotten around to it. And they point out her acting career is flourishing again with Netflix's You People and then The Best Man, the final chapters. And they also mention, you know, the relationship with uh, the Celtics coach. But they note that Nia's name was in headlines. Because of, because of him. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So many times in my life, I felt uncertain about where I'm going or what the right path is. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. If you listen to this podcast, you know that I am a huge advocate for therapy. I think everyone should get some, even the people that think they don't need it. My friend, you probably need it the most. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I love how easy BetterHelp makes it for everyone to receive therapy. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Ratchet today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. You all know I'm not the biggest fan of cooking, but when I do cook, I use my caraway kitchenware. I can make my favorite food and I know that my food won't be full of toxins and the cleanup will be easy and quick. Caraway cookware is non-toxic and chemical free, so you can fill your summer with your favorite recipes without worry. I love my caraway kitchen set. I got a set that matches my decor, so my food is good and my kitchen fashion is too. Caraway's internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home and comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. 
Their non-stick chemical-free ceramic coating makes for easy cooking and cleanup. And the non-toxic kitchenware means food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will leach into your healthy ingredients. All sets come equipped with complimentary, easy-access storage solutions to keep the kitchen tidy. I love that. Visit CarawayHome.com slash Respectable to get 10% off during their summer refresh event. Certain exclusions apply. That's CarawayHome.com slash Respectable or use code Respectable at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Support for today's episode comes from iHerb. iHerb offers the best curated selection of wellness products at the best possible value across a variety of categories, such as supplements, nutrition, beauty, and baby. When it comes to you or your baby's health, ingredients matter. iHerb cares about what's actually inside every bottle that may make up your morning beauty kids routines or your cool down routines and more. You can search by category, brand, or ailments you want help with, like hair, skin, and nails, or kids' health. And then you can further narrow your search by ratings, price, diet, like vegan or all-natural. They've really thought of everything to make shopping for these products convenient and easy. For a limited time, new customers will get 22% off their entire order with our exclusive offer. Go to iHerb.com and use promo code RATCHET to get 22% off. You know how much I love a good skincare product. I go to iHerb to get all my new goodies. Whether it's collagen, cleansers, moisturizers, or serums, the products are top tier through iHerb. And you can trust your products will arrive in first-rate condition because iHerb orders are shipped from climate-controlled fulfillment centers to ensure the quality of their products. And they ship to over 185 countries. Plus, you'll get free shipping in the USA on purchases over $20. Ladies, this is the site you've been waiting for. All the best products from popular brands for both you and the kids. It's time to get your health in check with iHerb. New customers get 22% off your first order when you use code RATCHET at iHerb.com. That's 22% off your first order at iHerb.com. Promo code RATCHET. Choose iHerb because wellness matters. I'm looking forward to Nia Long's book. To really think about it, I don't really know much about Nia Long. Nia Long has always been around. Like she had like 50 million Essence covers. She's been in a bunch of movies. But what do you really know about Nia Long? Because if she's 50 something, she was in this long relationship with old boy. That was like 10 years. So that puts her back at 40. But we met Nia Long on screen when she was like in her early 20s. I really can't tell you anybody that Nia Long dated from like 20 to 40. I mean, that's a good thing. Like the father of her oldest son, I have no idea who that is. She keeps her business out the street like Gen X people do, some of them, not all of them. She's from a different era, which God, I miss it. I've been watching this Cardi and Offset thing play out. I'm still not sure exactly all of what's going on. I saw Offset accuse his wife of cheating and then Cardi was on Twitter spaces or something singing about it and she was like I couldn't cheat on him I'm too famous and niggas run their mouths and I was like okay I mean that's that's true shouldn't it be like I'm I'm not gonna cheat on him because he's my husband but then also he's cheated on her publicly like several times but Offset but Offset tweeted something about Cardi cheated on him he like posted and deleted and then that's why Cardi responded with the singing and I was like yo Like, I know y'all are, y'all are millennial people. Y'all are social media people. Like there's a type of person that likes to play out everything online, but like y'all are whole married people, at least two children together. Offset has two or three others. Offset has two or three others, three, because I can picture the little girl and two boys. I can picture them on the cover of Essence. So Offset is a father of five, like, sir. Also, as many times as you've been publicly caught, we don't even know how many times Offset's cheated. 
publicly he's been caught out there at least twice. We know for a fact you've cheated. This is not even a speculation. And now you want to put it out there like, oh, Cardi cheated on you? Like, oh, oh, so she did what you did. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Also saw Tasha. Is it Tasha K? That's her name, right? I saw she's antagonizing Cardi again. She wrote something. It was like this sarcastic apology to Cardi B. Or maybe more so to Cardi B's fans. The gist of it was that Cardi is so obsessed with her that she hasn't been in the studio. And she was also saying that Cardi's album really didn't make the numbers that have been put out there. And the record label doesn't want to invest in her. And I was like, wait, Cardi with the Grammy? Cardi who was doing those crazy streams? That album at least went platinum. You trying to tell me Cardi ain't make no money off that? Tasha, you owe that lady a lot of money. I would just think if it was me, and clearly it's not me, because I say allegedly. And if somebody sent me a cease and desist, I'm not really trying to go to court. I'm not even trying to pay lawyer fees. Like, I would just desist. Nothing that I really say on here, no one that I speak about on here is really that serious to me. I'm not trying to pay a lawyer or retainer. I'll just, I'll just take it down. But like, Tasha lost in court twice. She owes this lady money. She's had to file for bankruptcy to avoid paying her. And still, still, she runs her mouth about her. I just, I don't get it. The courts determined you were making up shit, that you were lying on this woman. You are dead wrong here. You have no high ground from which to operate. Like, I know what I said was the truth. I stand in the convictions of what I said. Like, you were proven to be lying. You came at this woman. She asked you to take it down. You refused. You went to court. The court found in her favor. You appealed. They found in her favor again. And now you've had to file for bankruptcy. Like, you've done nothing right in this whole situation. And you still antagonize this lady? Why? Why, Tasha? Why? There's got to be some reason to it. Like, is this how she's keeping her numbers up on her page? Is it strategy? She gets paid for the views. So maybe that's why? I don't know. McCarty and Offset just over there just having problems. I'm like, if y'all don't go to a damn therapist's office and work this out behind the scenes, whole married people, parents. What else is on this list? Nothing I really want to talk about. There's stuff. I'm just not that interested. Sorry. I ain't trying to waste your time or mine. I did watch The Perfect Find on Netflix. It was very cute. I'm still not dating a guy 20 years my junior, but it was very cute in the movie. Very cute. The guy, the actor, the boyfriend reminds me very much of, what's my boo who I worry about on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? I can't remember his name for anything, but the guy that plays Will, he has Will energy. He's not as, what's the word? He's not as yippy. The guy that plays Will, much like the original Will and like Will Smith in person, has like just tons of like all over the place energy. Like he just, he can't sit still kind of energy. This guy has a more calm energy, but like they look like same tribe. They could be cousins, not brothers, but cousins. But he's like a calm version of the new Will on Bel Air. I liked him. He's cute. But he's also like super young. I couldn't do it. Gabrielle Union is playing a 40, I guess she's 40, 41, something like that, dating a 25-year-old. And I was like, I can't. I can't. I think 25-year-olds are adorable. I can't date one. I also watched and Just Like That. Um, Don't love it. I don't know if they got like new writers or... I do remember when Sex and the City came back. Because I'm never really going to call it in just like that. But when Sex and the City came back, it was only supposed to be a limited series. That one season. And then it was done. And they kept insisting like, nope, that's it. We just came back for a season. No mas. But then people, well, some people, because it didn't really get great reviews. Some people loved it. Some people loved the nostalgia of it. Some people hated it. But it got enough good attention that HBO decided to do it for another season. Okay. 
I was excited about second season. I was one of those people that really did enjoy the first season of the reboot. I liked the new characters. I think the writers, when they created the show, had one season in mind and never really gave much thought to what a season two could look like because what they're doing with these characters is just bizarre. Charlotte's Charlotte's storylines have never really had much depth, so I don't expect much. Oh, just so we're clear, I'm about to do spoilers. So if you haven't watched yet, you probably do want to just turn the podcast off right now. I have another topic I'm going to talk about after this. You might want to fast forward, but I'm about to do spoilers. This is your warning. But Carrie, as like the main character of this show, like has no real storyline. This whole like I'm a 50 something year old woman and I agreed to something because I'm a people pleaser and I don't know how to tell this guy that I don't want to progress to like a more serious situation. I don't know how to say it and I have to spend a whole episode trying to figure it out. Huh? And then Carrie is the main character. Like your core storyline is getting dressed to go to the Met Gala. That's it. For your main character? Really? Miranda and Che out in Hollywood? The Miranda part of it didn't bother me as much as it did other people. Like, some people were like, I absolutely hate Miranda. Like, she's worse now than she was before. Like, I can't stand her. Miranda doesn't really bother me. But this whole Che storyline, she doesn't want to be held by Miranda. And she tells Miranda that, like, I'm on a diet. And then has, like, this, like, weird boohoo moment. I really thought she was joking. I thought she was like, it was part of like, I don't know, some skit or or she was rehearsing a scene from the show or some lines from the show to see if the storyline played well. I didn't really think she was serious. And then she was. And I was like, are you, are you kidding me? The racism storyline with LTW's husband. I don't tune in the Sex in the City for this. I want I want escapism, not racism. This franchise has been going on for literally, literally 25 years y'all decided to address racism now and then you do it with a black guy who can't get a cab in new york city do black people have problems getting cabs in new york city i mean sure but this was like a huge issue i don't know before uber was invented it just felt really dated and unnecessary and i was like huh then like the incompetent black girl that couldn't like finish carrie's dress for the ball That's not the worst of it. The worst of it, though, is the professor, Professor Naya and his whole storyline with her husband. And she's jealous of like the girl in the hat. And the husband's trying to explain to her like, oh, I have this chick up in my hotel room while you're calling me on FaceTime. And she was like, I'm wearing the panties that you like. Like it was it was too much. And then like her having a meltdown and like calling Miranda. I'm like, "Mm." I don't know what the writers are doing. I need them to get on track. This ain't it. Sex in the City has been my show, my my series, my film, my whatever for like over 20 years. And then the last two episodes, I'm just like, if y'all don't take Nicole Ari Parker and give her her own show. And Seema. I like Seema. She had a strong storyline. Like I felt that was a classic Sex in the City storyline. Like I'm dating this guy. And then I found and then I find out he has a wife that he still lives with, even though they're divorced. Like, this is too messy for me. Like, literally, she says, I'm not missing the Met for mess. And walks out on him and his wife gets in the car and goes to get dressed for the ball. Like that storyline completely worked for me. But she was probably the only one. I just I didn't love it. And then I thought I was being really hard on it. And so I watched it again because I was I was kind of tired the first time I watched it. Like I was really just trying to like get through it because I wanted to watch it to say that I watched it so we could talk about it on here. And then like I watched it again and I was like, nope, mm-mm, bad. Don't like it. Nope. Mm-mm. Like I really thought it was a joke when Che was like, I feel fat. It is not to say that like, you know, a 50 something or a 40 something non-binary person can't have you know, body insecurities, like being in LA is, is a complete mind fuck just across the board. But especially when it comes to physical appearance, like I get it. It's just, it's not necessarily the plot. It's the way it's executed. Like I was just like, are you kidding me right now? 
Also, it's like super sexually graphic. Just the show in general. Like Miranda's like naked, crawling out of like the floaty thing. And then like Miranda's got her head between Che's legs. Charlotte's got her titties out. Sarah Jessica Parker has a no nudity clause in her contract. That's why she has her bra on in bed. But I was, it was just like so extra sexual. And I was just like, this isn't what the show is. Like it's sex in the city for sure. There's a lot of conversation about sex. Yes. But like, and it's not even because the women are of a certain age. Like I'm not that much younger than them. Like I do believe women in their fifties are fucking God willing, but it's just the execution of it all. Or just like the, it, it seems forced. Last but not least. Last but not least, we need to talk about, I almost called her Megan Majors, Megan Good and Jonathan Majors. I don't have too much to say about it. I'm actually going to bridle my tongue a little bit on this one. At the end of last episode, I said something about Megan Good being Jonathan Majors' side piece. I don't know that for like 100% sure. It's not like I personally saw them with my own eyes, like out in public. Although I did call back to LA and a friend did confirm it. She was like, yeah, they've been seeing each other for a while. She's someone who would know. Um, but even without her actually saying that, I had just assumed. Megan Good showed up to court with Jonathan Majors for his, can we call it his assault case? Is that fair? It's approximately three months, almost to the day of when he was arrested for assault and it made the news everywhere the next morning. And also let's just state this as a fact, because this is what Jonathan Majors lawyer has said. And then also the text messages that Jonathan Majors lawyer released in the text messages that between Jonathan Majors and his ex-girlfriend, the night after the incident happened, she sends him a series of text messages taking accountability for what happened and saying that she'll, she'll tell the police that he's innocent. He didn't do anything and he doesn't deserve to be, you know, in jail or charged or, or any of those things. She'll take care of it. And he responds to her. Did you leave the keys on the counter? They live together after his most recent day in court. The lawyer's been doing the round. She's been talking and the newspapers have, you know, given various details about Jonathan Major's relationship with his ex. They lived in a three-story penthouse apartment in New York. This is a serious relationship. I still haven't been able to figure out how long they were actually together. Information released by his lawyer. She says the ex-girlfriend after this alleged incident the one that they're in court over, she says the girlfriend and her friend went to the club. They drank all night. They ordered a bunch of champagne. The girl put it on her card, which Jonathan Bajers pays. So again, living girlfriend that has a credit card in his name, serious relationship. So three months later, Jonathan Majors and Megan Good are now in a serious relationship. You show up in public for the first time with your new boyfriend holding hands with him at his court case for assaulting the woman that he dated either before you or also while dating you. So did you start dating him seriously after he was accused of assaulting this woman. Like you heard that, that he had allegedly assaulted a woman and then realized he was single because he told the lady to leave the key on the counter. And then you decided now is my time to slide in while he's being accused of assault. Like you heard he might have beat somebody. And then you decided, you know what? This is somebody I should date. And then within that three months time, you decided that he was so amazing That he was such a great guy. He's worth it. I'm going to ride for him. I'm going to show up to court. I'm going to show up to court and put my reputation on the line supporting this guy who allegedly assaulted this woman and has become persona non grata. 
I'm going to hitch my cart to this particular horse after 90 days. She'd have to be borderline insane because everyone I know, note what I said, everyone I know, I tend to hang around with people that more or less have good common sense. Everyone I know is like, Megan, baby, what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? You going to hard launch a whole relationship with a guy at his court case for assaulting his ex-girlfriend? Huh? Megan Good. Megan Good is over 40. We've known who Megan Good is since Eve's Bayou. Was that the name of the movie? She was a kid. She might have been like, what, 10, 12, something like that. We've known Megan Good her entire life. Short of when she was dating that football player and would go to the club in seemingly the same outfits every night with her pack of cigarettes. That's the most scandal Megan Good ever had. She married the preacher. Things didn't work out. Even that, like they got divorced. It's not like it was a murder trial. Like that's the most scandal we've ever heard from Megan Good in literally 30 years. And now all of a sudden, like now you want to pop out with a dude who's on trial for assault? Really? You want to pop out with a dude that you just met? While he's on trial for assault? Really? Don't sound right. Don't seem right. If Megan Good was somebody who was like, you know, always in some shit, always in some scandal, Summer Walker, I mean you, it, I'd be like, all right, like, yeah, she just met this dude. She falls for guys really easy. Like, okay, like this, this is the type of shit she always be on. This is some shit Megan does. Megan don't really be involved in scandal like that. I would guess, and it's also been confirmed, that she'd been dating him for a minute while he was living with old girl, while old girl had the key to the house, while old girl had his credit card. She was dating him then. She's been around for a minute before the incident where he was accused of assault, before he actually broke up with old girl. There were reports at the time when Jonathan Majors first got arrested. I think the girl might've said something in the text messages too that she tried to grab his phone because she thought he was texting another woman. I have no idea whether it's Megan Good or not. I would imagine he probably got a few women. He was tracking to be Hollywood A-list. He got a whole bunch of money. Like after that Ebony cover, especially, women were going crazy for him. I would imagine neither his phone nor his DMs were dry. Then my friend threw out this theory. She was like, what if it was Megan who was texting him? And that's who old girl, the ex-girlfriend, that's who the girl saw and flipped out in the car. This whole incident happens where he ends up arrested. Maybe she feels guilty because she's the one that texted him and kind of like, you know, set this whole thing in motion. And now she feels like she has to show up and support him because, you know, not that it's her fault, but her texting him or her being in contact and the girlfriend finding out about it is what like, you know, is the spark. This sets the dynamite off. I would guess it's probably much more simple. She's been rocking with him for a minute. She feels like she knows him. She understands him. She gets him. He would never because he's never to me. And so she's like, you know, she's been in it for a minute. So she feels like showing up to court with him ain't really crazy. Where it looks crazy to the public because we only found out about them like two months ago. And we know that he had a girlfriend up until three months ago when the incident happened. But in her head, if she'd been around for a minute, six months, nine months, whatever, but she's been around long enough where she feels comfortable risking it all, gambling it all, really, to rock out with him in public and be like, I take what I take, but I'm going to stand by my man. I also heard his penis is amazing, which... Remember I was going on and on about Jonathan Major's nose? I was actually celebrating it for a completely different reason. However, there was a study that came out the other day that said that there's a correlation between the size of men's noses and their penises. And I was like, it would explain so much. It would explain so much. If you just told me that like Megan Good was just straight up digmatized, like say she met him after he broke up with old girl. She wasn't the side piece. For whatever reason, she just decided, yes, you're on trial for assaulting your ex-girlfriend, but I'm just here for the D, you know? And then it was so mesmerizing that she was just like, I just, I'll do anything for it. I'll ride or die for the D. Like that would make so much more sense to me.
She put a lot on the line for this dude. And also, too, as the first man she's publicly dating post-divorce, it'd be fine if it was Jonathan Majors, like, from four months ago, like, in the middle of the Creed promo. Like, that was the time to pop out. On trial for assault? Like, even if that was your boo, (laughs) you had to show up to court to show your support. You couldn't go over to the house and pray with him, pray over him even. Make breakfast, say a prayer together. I'll be here when you get back, babe. I'll make your favorite dinner. Something like you had to show up to court and hold hands. Like, that's how you had to support him. You couldn't think of no other way to support him that didn't put your good reputation at risk. That's why I be telling y'all, like, I don't, I don't want level 10 dick. I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose my mind over, over a penis. Mm -mm. I want to be out here acting crazy, just doing dumb shit, having a good, respectable name and, and putting it on the line over. And even if you think he didn't do it, which I hope he didn't, I really do do it. Like you couldn't wait until like his name is clear to pop out. You couldn't wait for him to be found not guilty before you pop out. Like, you want to pop out when it's still all in question. Like, why, Megan? Why? Do you know who you are? Remember who you are. I said I'm going to talk about this shit. Now I've talked about it in depth. Let me wrap this up. I got to hop on the train in the morning or the afternoon. I technically don't have a train ticket. But the trains are open, so I'll just get on, I don't know, whatever next one leaves when I get to the station. All right. Not everything, but enough. I'll be back on Friday. Also, you're getting this before everybody else. I'm doing the trip to Ghana for Thanksgiving. The same one I did last year. Slight modification. But I'm going to announce it this week. If you follow me on social media, I would suggest you turn your notifications on. The first announcement will be the date and time that the trip is available for purchase. And then I'll remind people of the purchase date. It will most likely be July 1st, which is a Saturday, noon Eastern Standard Time. So I'm not committed to that time. I'm just telling you as a casual recommendation, July 1st, noon Eastern Standard Time, when I announce that the trip is available for purchase. So if you want to go, it's the week of Thanksgiving. Like I said, not everything, but enough of some things. All right, bye.